Yo, yo, welcome to Smallmouth Crush. What are you doing, Kevin? We're gonna paint some jig heads here. We're gonna pour wow. some jig heads. We're gonna paint some jig heads. We'll show you how it all goes. Awesome. It's all coming up, guys. All right, so a couple weeks back, we made a video on pouring our own tube heads. And we got a lot of people asking a lot of questions about it. Yeah, people um, seem to like it. A lot of people like excited it. about trying, maybe pouring their own baits. And so today I wanted to take it a step further, invite Kevin back in here and talk a little bit about making uh, mushroom head, Ned Rig heads, um, finesse style jig heads, basically. Yep. And we're going to actually go real quick on how to pour them because, you know, we, you guys can check and you perhaps watch our previous video on pouring the tube. It's pretty much the same thing just a different mold. And then we're gonna go into detail on how we actually paint these. It's a really unique situ uh, setup that we have here. A little bit different than what I'm used to. I'm used to grabbing the old uh, can of paint here, right? twisting it off, heating it up, dipping it in, and hope it turns out. Right. Right? Yep. I think a lot of us do that. You can get pretty extreme. Obviously, you have. Yeah. So I'm interested to learn a little bit about that, um, you know, how you actually, how you created this little paint setup here uh, but first why don't we just start out with uh, actual pouring the uh, the jig heads and, and how we approach that you got it so again we're using our Lee pouring pot you can melt the lead any way you want this is the way that I do it at this point it's a little more controlled we're using another do it mold this particular mold is uh, your they're calling it a worm nose jig it's a mushroom head jig for uh, any other any other term uh, it's got a nice little bait keeper on it, a nice mushroom head uh, top. It's a, It runs from 330 seconds up to 516. So again, we're talking finesse fishing here. These are your smaller jig heads. We're using a nice one-aught light wire hook, another mustad hook. Yeah. They're super sharp, uh, but they're nice light wire, and it does not take much to get one of these stuck into something. So you'll notice, opposed to our jig hooks that are a little bit stiffer, these have a little bit more give to them, but a real sharp point and the right size for the Ned Rig baits that you're gonna see. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing you'll notice a little different if you saw our tube video, my tube mold didn't have any of this black soot on it. Um, that tube mold is a very simple, wide open cavity from the largest to the smallest. The lead gets in there very well and it's easy to pour. This particular mold, again, they're very small. It's a small amount of lead, and there are some really detailed portions of these cavities to get the lead all the way in there because to me, the prime piece of this is that nice, sharp bait holder that you're gonna have down on the shank of the hook. That's key. That's gonna keep the bait in place. To get that bait holder, especially down on the smaller sizes, you're just gonna take a lighter or a candle. When I'm pouring a lot of these at home, I light a candle, I have it sitting there, and it's easy. About every five pours, I kind of re-soot the, the mold here. And all you're going to do is with the flame, the top of the flame has that little bit of the soot here. It's not about the heat. It's about applying that soot. And it's basically like a fine sand that acts as lubrication and it allows the lead to get into the jig. I thought you just got hot one night and the fire department showed nope. up or something went, went crazy there. It is no. strategic, you know, okay. and, and anytime you're gonna be pouring jigs that have these detailed cavities or that have very small cavities and you mm. wanna make sure you get them filled because it's really easy to try to pour this 330 second jig and not get anything on the hook shank. At that point, your hook kind of rattles around in the jig head and it's just not a quality you know, bait or, or hook to use. And that's not what we want to be out there with. We want to be out there with something we can count on and it's going to do the job right. So a little trick of the trade there, mm. you heat it up a little, or not heat it, but kind of soot it, put the smoke on there from a candle or a lighter, and it's going to let it go right in. So just like we poured before, we're going to just fill our mold with some hooks. We're going to drop some lead in there. Okay. Once we do that, All right, got these in here. We're quickly gonna go ahead and fill our mold. I try to drop it straight into the mouth of the mold. Again, trying to get it down into those cavities. Okay, once we do that, our jigs come out. You'll notice they have a little bit of the overpour on them on the top. 
To get that off, real simple, you're gonna grab the overpour, and you're just gonna lightly wiggle off the excess, okay? It's gonna leave you the cleanest top section that you can get. It's right. really hard when you try to bite them off with pliers. It inevitably wants to make marks on the top of the bait mm -hmm. or, you know, screw things up. It that's, doesn't work That's great. extremely clean. Yep, it comes I, I off super clean. I noticed you have a little bit of sandpaper here as well, right? I do. Okay. This is so. just a, anything, you know, a fine sandpaper. This is 180 grit, something you can get at your local hardware store. Just put it on a flat surface real quickly. Rub the jig head on it. That's just going to clean up the rest of that burr. It's going to be nice and smooth to put your paint on. Perfect. All right. At that point, here's what we're going to do. And I'm going to start with a larger jig head so that you guys will get the opportunity to see it on camera. Again, I'm going to clean it up real quick. Just break off that overpour. Just a quick little run on our sandpaper. And then we get down to the nitty gritty of actually painting these lures. Now, for me to paint these lures, I use what's called a fluid bed. It's a, a simple system that allows you to fluff up the powder paint. It injects air under the paint. There's a small filter between it. And then the paint itself is fluffed up instead of being a dense, hard blob of paint that ends up being in these containers, especially once they sit over winter. I don't touch these things all year after we pour some jigs. This is solid in here. Even as I tap it, it doesn't even move around initially. It's super dense. And in my experience, what I've found when I dip it into the paint, I get a big glob on the top I get nothing down here on my on my bait keeper and uh, not that it's important to have it down here but it's just nice to have a nice consistent finish on them okay sure. so this system is all built from our local hardware store with a few components from Amazon or your local pet store this is a PVC quick disconnect. It's a two inch size that I use, about the biggest you're gonna find in the hardware store, two, two and a half inches. This has a plugged bottom, which allows you to actually create some pressure with some air. The two pieces separate and you put a filter between them. And honestly, you can go online and find these plans for this. I'm not a genius, I didn't come up with this. I found it online and made it. Okay. So by all means, do a quick search on you know jig powder painting or fluid beds and you will find plans just like this. The filter material can be made out of a multitude of different things. The actual bed itself can be made out of multiple different things. This is the system that I put together. I can tell you I built this whole thing in about 20 minutes one day. It's very easy That'd to put together. take me about five hours, yeah, if that. If you ever got it together, yeah. Um, <laughs> and insane. the one thing to know is it's not super clean. It, you are ejecting air under this powder. It's loose. It's going to get all over, but you are going to get a consistent finish, okay? And we're going to get some close-ups of this so you really know what's going on. Um, but again, you're injecting air under your powder. The powder sits on top of a screen and then the powder in this container here is nice and light real quick if i can just touch base on this so when when i have to paint my 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 heads mm -hmm. i don't have a setup like this right so what i'll do is i'll just basically unscrew this and i'll take like a uh, a nail to stir it up yep and then dip it yes now that's going to help but it is frustrating because after two or three dips you have to continuously yes. restir it so yep. this is a lot more consistent if you guys are planning on doing this on a regular basis, this is definitely the setup uh, to have moving forward. Yep, and if you're uh, flush with cash or if you're not super into building things yourself, you can buy commercial fluid beds. They are out there, loreparts.com. A bunch of people have them that you can buy them, but they're usually $30, $40 for one that holds a single color. And then to swap between them, you have to clean it up. It's a little bit of a pain. I was able to put this whole thing together for 30 bucks. I have three different colors I can run. And the way this is built, I can cap these, pop them out, bring three different colors in, hook them in, and just keep going and going. So um, this works really well and again you can find these plans online it's it's nothing special sure. all right guys so here's what we're going to do we take our jig i'm sure people have powder painted jigs before this is nothing crazy but we're just going to show you you have a heat source any type of torch and you're going to quickly flash some heat on your jig you want to be careful not to melt it but you've got to get it hot enough for that lead to stick or for the paint to stick pop it in there you already get your nice shine and then back here we have just a thing of room temperature water that locks it in, wow. all right? And that's the whole process. I, and the nice thing about this fluid bed setup is that we can run through. Now, usually what I'll do, I really like a nice finish, so I usually do a second coating. I put my first one on. Sometimes you get some little pops or, or dimples in it and it doesn't look perfect. This one's gonna look nice because I had it pretty hot. Um, but it's hard to get the temperature perfect. Usually what I'll do after I get the first one on is just flash it again. Mm -hmm dip it again, get a nice consistent coating. And plus it's gonna be, 
it's built up a little bit, so it's going to be hard if you're banging it off of docks or throwing it around rocks or anything sure. like that. You got a little bit of extra coating for it to hold up, and uh, and that's the whole deal. So, all right, guys. So I'm sure you'll notice on the table here, along with the fluid bed setup, we have a toaster oven. Mm. We're not making toast though. I'm sure it looks pretty weird. It does look weird. Yeah, it's not. There's a purpose for this. There is absolutely a purpose. So. After you powder paint your jigs, there is a final option to bake the powder paint. Mm -hmm. And baking the powder paint is just going to make it rock solid. Oh, it's super don't... hard, but the, you guys that like to flip jigs up into the rocks, football heads, shaky, arky jigs, anything like that that you like to throw up into the rocks or around mm -hmm. hard stuff, I would definitely recommend baking the powder paint. This toaster oven came brand new from Walmart for $19.99. I swear to God, you can buy right. a brand new toaster oven for $19.99. Sure. Um, I stole the tray out of it because you don't need it for this application. And uh, you're just going to bake your paint. It actually gives you the instructions right on your ProTech paint or whatever powder paint you might use. It'll tell you that at the end, hang it and bake it at 350 for 20 minutes. And after you do that and they cool, it is rock hard. Right, right. All right, guys, there you go. Everything you need to know and then some right. on how to pour the net rig head. Absolutely. And I know that this is a little bit complicated. There's a little bit of excess here. It doesn't have to be this crazy, but if you like this and you want to figure out how to go deeper, spend some time on the internet, throw some questions in the comments, and we'll help you get there. Sure. I'm going to link the video that we did on, on creating that tube head so you guys can take a look at that. If you haven't seen that, that's a really good video on how to you know, just some more how-tos. Yep, uh, that goes over a lot of the initial setup, the physical pouring of the jigs. The really only new thing we introduced today is physically powder painting them, the fluid bed. It's a different style jig that we're pouring, but it's all the same stuff. Sure, pretty simple. I got a busy week coming up. I'm heading down to the Bassmaster Classic. We're gonna be doing daily videos while we're at the Classic. So uh, I help Mercury out every year. It's been great, I've been going down there since 2007. So look forward to that, guys. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.